experimental and clinical psychologists. The learning objectives for this section are define the clinical practice of psychology and distinguish it from experimental psychology. Explain how science is relevant to clinical practice and define the concept of an empirically supported treatment and give some examples. Who conducts scientific research in psychology? Experimental psychologists. Scientific research in psychology is generally conducted by people with doctoral degrees, usually the doctor of philosophy, which is what we call a PhD, and master's degrees in psychology and related fields, often supported by research assistants with bachelor's degree or other relevant training. Some of them work for government agencies, so for example, doing research on the impact of public policies. National associations, like the American Psycho Psychological Association. They may work for nonprofit organizations, such as the National Alliance on Mental Illness, or in the private sector, like in product marketing and development or organizational behavior. However, the majority of experimental psychologists are college and university faculty who often collaborate with their graduate and undergraduate students. Although some researchers are trained and licensed as clinicians for mental health work, especially those who conduct research in clinical psychology, the majority of them are not clinicians. Instead, they have expertise in one or more of the many other subfields of psychology, behavioral neuroscience, cognitive psychology, developmental psychology, personality psychology, social psychology, and so on. Doctoral level researchers might be employed to conduct research full-time or like many college and university faculty members to conduct research in addition to teaching classes and serving their institution and community in other ways. Of course, people also conduct research in psychology because they enjoy the intellectual and technical challenges involved and the satisfaction of contributing to scientific knowledge of human behavior. You might find that you enjoy the process too. If so, you might find other opportunities to get involved in ongoing research as either a research assistant or a participant when you transfer to a four-year university. Of course, you might find that you don't enjoy the process of conducting scientific research in psychology, but at least you'll have a better understanding of where scientific knowledge in psychology comes from, an appreciation for its strengths and limitations, and an awareness of how it can be applied to solve practical problems in psychology and everyday life. Clinical psychologists. Psychology is the scientific study of behavior and mental processes, but it is also the application of scientific research to help people, organizations, and communities function better. By far the most common and widely known application is the clinical practice of psychology the diagnosis and treatment of psychological disorders and related problems. Let us use the term clinical practice broadly to refer to the activities of clinical and counseling psychologists, school psychologists, marriage and family therapists, licensed clinical social workers, and others who work with people individually or in small groups to identify and help address their psychological problems. It's important to consider the relationship between scientific research in clinical practice, because many students are interested, are especially interested in clinical practice, perhaps even as a career. So how do those two things link together? The main point is that psychological disorders and other behavior problems are part of the natural world. This means that questions about their nature, causes and consequences are empirically testable and therefore subject to scientific study. As with other questions about human behavior, we cannot rely on our intuition or common sense for detailed and accurate answers. Consider, for example, that dozens of popular books and thousands of websites claim that adult children of alcoholics have a distinct personality profile, including low self-esteem, feelings of powerlessness, and difficulties with intimacy. Although this sounds plausible, Scientific research has demonstrated that adult children of alcoholics are no more likely to have these problems than anybody else. Similarly, questions about whether a particular psychotherapy is effective are empirically testable questions that can be answered by scientific research. 
If a new psychotherapy is an effective treatment for depression, then systematic observation should reveal that depressed people who receive this psychotherapy improve more than a similar group of depressed people who do not receive psychotherapy or who receive some alternative treatment. Treatments that have been shown to work in this way are called empirically supported treatments. An empirically supported treatment is one that has been studied scientifically and shown to result in greater improvement than no treatment, a placebo, or some alternative treatment. These include many forms of psychotherapy, which can be as effective as standard drug therapies. Among the forms of psychotherapy with strong empirical support are the following. Acceptance and commitment therapy, or ACT, for depression, mixed anxiety disorders, psychosis, chronic pain, and obsessive compulsive disorder. Behavioral couples therapy, it's been shown effective for alcohol use disorders. Cognitive behavioral therapy, or C CBT, has been shown effective for many disorders, including eating disorders, depression, anxiety disorders, and so on. Exposure therapy is very effective for post-traumatic stress disorder and phobias. Exposure therapy with response prevention is effective for obsessive compulsive disorder. And finally, family-based treatment has been shown effective for eating disorders. For a more complete list, you can um, check out the websites which are available in the text version of this information. Many in the clinical psych psychology community have argued that their field has not paid enough attention to scientific research. For example, by failing to use empirically supported treatments and have suggested a variety of changes in the way clinicians are trained and treatments are evaluated and put into practice. Others believe that these claims are exaggerated and the suggested changes are unnecessary. On both sides of the debate, however, there is agreement that a scientific approach to clinical psychology is essential if the goal is to diagnose and treat psychological problems based on detailed and accurate knowledge about those problems and the most effective treatment for them. So not only is it important for scientific research in clinical psychology to continue, but it's also important for clinicians who never conduct a scientific study themselves to be scientifically literate so that they can read and evaluate new research and make treatment decisions based on the best available evidence.